But the, what I want to share with you is a true story. It's a story of my life and life of a few others who are sitting amongst you today and maybe life of a nation, nation of entrepreneurs in Iran. This story for me started in 1990s. I want to ask how many of you were in the States in the early 90s? A few. 93, 94, 95. I resigned from IBM, a great job, great place to work then, in 1994 to start my own high-tech startup in upstate New York. IBM was the job I wanted to have. It was my dream job. When I was a kid in Iran, when I grew up, when I got to the States, when I was 17 years old, my dream was actually to work in IBM, and I got that job. In 94, my dream was to start my own company as an entrepreneur. You know what? States, early 1990s, wasn't an easy place to start a startups. We had high inflation, overheating economy, and we were using dial-ups. America Online, lots of numbers to dial up. The internet penetration in the States at that time was only 20%. It was a tough place to be. And like Amy, I wanted to raise $2.5 million, and nobody would give it to me. So I had to start without any money. Eventually, I turned that $2.5 million by end of 2000, around 2000, to $250 million. That's how much we sold my company, merged it with a public company in the States. During those years, hundreds of startups started in the States. Many of them disappeared, do not exist, but some of them had, have turned out to be the global brands that we all know. Yahoo, eBay, PayPal, Amazon are the first generation of startups in the Internet. I have to tell you a story of 20 years in 10 minutes. So I'm going to fast forward 10 years to 2011 in Iran. Last three years in Iran has been uh, some of the most difficult times that any nation can face. You all know, know about sanctions. You know about closure of investments or reduction in investments and international trades. Soaring inflation, around 40 to 50 percent. And worst of all, 300 percent devaluation of currency in just 12 months. Sounds like a startup, doesn't it? Only in reverse. I wanted to help, like many of the other entrepreneurs, we get addicted to helping other entrepreneurs. It's not about money, like Jeff said. I started Sarava to help entrepreneurs in Iran because they had no other lines of support. What happened over the last three years in Iran? Scene three. Entrepreneurs don't give up because it is difficult. Entrepreneurs don't give up because there are sanctions, inflation, and devaluation of currency. They don't. And this is a true story of our life. I met more than 100 startups in Iran. We started a startup weekend. We had 16 events in the last 12 months in Iran. Not only in Tehran, but some of the most beautiful cities in Iran, like Isfahan, Shiraz, Mashhad, and others. We had highest rate of growth for startup weekends in any country in the world in the last 12 months in Iran. We had 1,400 entrepreneurs in 150 teams in 12 months. And this was done by, in, by an NGO called Iranian Entrepreneurship Association, which was also started by, a star, by an entrepreneur Mohsen Malayari, please stand up and please round up the clouds for him. Because he was, he's a young chap, but he wanted to, have, to help the entrepreneurs, and I suggested to him as his mentor to start an NGO. And this has been the fastest growing probably NGO I've ever seen. 
How do we do this in Iran? It's not that much different, really, than what you do in your countries. We use startup weekends to promote the culture of entrepreneurship. We, uh, we can't have Webby Awards, so we started our own. It's called Iran Web and Mobile Festival. This year, 9,000 websites and 1,200 mobile applications participated in 42 categories and won awards. I don't know if Bob is here, but he mentioned it. We don't have our own user manual, so we sponsored translating Bob's into Persian. So the start of owner's manual, Bob Dorf's, is the book that we use in Farsi language to help the startups. I promise to share with you a real success story in Iran. Amongst the hundred startups that I, I work with, there are a few that I think have the potential to be the biggest brands in Iran, maybe Middle East, if not globally. So Peter is right. You don't need to be in Silicon Valley. You don't need to be in Helsinki even. I don't know if I want to be in Helsinki and actually <coughs> probably colder than Moscow. <laughs> it's pretty close. The real entrepreneurship success is about digicolor.com, a review and online shopping site in Iran, which has become the dominant e-commerce brand of Iran. It has 350,000 unique visitors every day, and it's growing. It has... 500,000.5 million registered users. It is the Alexa rating 11 or 12, sometimes goes to 10, fluctuating up there. The seventh most popular website in Persian language after the new sites. It is actually a commercial site. It is the 776 globally most visited site, and yes, it is in Iran. It has grown 200% every year for seven years. And last week, it was shipping 2,000 orders every day. This week, I was informed that it has gone to 3,000 because it is Iranian New Year coming up, the orders coming up. It owns 85% of the online retail in the country. Shipping, glo shipping uh, not globally yet, shipping in the country, across uh, the whole of the country. It was formed by who? Major corporations? Big companies, government? No. It was formed by two entrepreneurs, Hamid and Saeed, Mohammadi, twin brothers. One of them is here. I want Hamid to stand up. We did not bring his brother. It's cost-saving. But it looks exactly the same as him. They are actually twins, identical twins. And this is a picture when I met him uh, two and a half years ago. That was the whole company. It looks like 1960s picture. And uh, the same exact people, the team is still with the company. They have grown to lead different parts of the company. And uh, 20 people in a 250 square meter apartment now is a 225 people occupying a fulfillment center of 10,000 square meters. And it's growing. We can't find a place to, to room these people. We already have plans. They have plans to grow to 701 people. I don't know why they chose 701, but they are growing to 701 this year. The idea started because Hamid and Saeed graduated from top universities in Iran wanted to buy an SLR camera in 2005. They wanted to treat themselves with three, uh, almost like $300, $350 of money they had saved, and they couldn't find the information how to buy the camera. It took them three months to, find this, to choose this camera and find the right place and the best place to buy it. So they said, heck with it. We're going to start our own site. We're going to provide the information. Pricing, price comparisons. In countries like Iran, it is very difficult to have that transparency. You have to go to 20 different shops to find out what is the true price of anything. Now, DigiColor is the price index that every electronic shop uses globally. Iranians are buying it smarter. 
If you want to go to this side, the amount of information you find on any type of product is actually supersedes probably any global similar sites. It has enabled Ira Iranians to buy smarter. What is the secret of success of entrepreneurs in Iran? You know, Jeff stands up here, he's not here. He keeps telling you, the old man, it's not about money, it is true. It is about having a great team. Finding great teams is the most difficult thing to do in any country. It was the same in New York, it is the same in San Francisco or Austin, Texas, and it is the same in Iran. You need laser focus. Hamid and Said, the two brothers, are always focused on their business. And that's one of the secrets of their success. They need sound mentorship, like me. <coughs> and uh, they do get sound mentorship. The biggest shortage we have in Iran, if anybody wants to help, is actually mentors. We really are short of mentors. We're not short of money. We don't, we're not short of people. We're not short of talents. We are short of mentors. But you always need to have a fair talk ground for growth. 95 to, to, to 2000 in the States was growth and formation of internet. Without that, we could not have succeed. No matter how great teams we were, you have to find the real moment, that window of opportunity in your country, anywhere you are. Iran is a fertile ground, if not the most fertile ground in the Middle East. It has a young population and old culture. It's land of poetry and philosophy. We don't need to import that. And we are also the third largest country of bloggers in the world. After China, after states, and China. With only 80 million population. Population of Iran in the last three years, I'm losing my voice, grew from 75 to 79 million. 64% of that population is under the age of 35. Where else would you want to be if you're an entrepreneur? In the UK? No. 41% of this population is between the age 20 and 35, and they all know about Angry Birds, by the way, Peter. Technology-wise, last three years has been great years, actually. Penetration of internet grew from 42 to 55 percent. Roughly about 40 million plus Iranians are accessing internet, and the speed of internet is going up. The price, the cost is coming radically down. Mobile penetration in Iran grew from 99 percent to 126 percent. And the smartphones growth in 2012 alone in Iran was the, at 53 percent growth rate was the highest in any country in the world. Online transactions grew in the same three years by 400 percent. Iranians are paying online, although we don't have credit card. They have ATM or cash cards. They have bank cards. Internet banking is probably ahead of the states. Iran owns 54 percent of the internet market of Middle East. The role of Iran and entrepreneurs in Iran is not that different than the role of China and India in Asia or Brazil in Latin America or Russia in Russia. Iran is a great part of the Middle East economy. 54% of the market in one country, one language, one border. Can you pass me the water there? My apologies. It's the closing. When I crossed over Caspian Sea to get here 24 hours ago, I was reminded of a few hundred years old poem by an Iranian poet, Kalim Kashani. 
موجیم که آسودگی ما عدم ماست Like waves, our rest is our extinction. Entrepreneurs are like waves, and waves are everywhere. Not only in LA and in San Francisco and Moscow, but also in between Caspian Sea and Persian Gulf. And nothing can stop waves, nothing can stop entrepreneurship, And like waves, our rest is our extinction. Thank you.